it's your boy Johnny Shreve. I have BB Promos Intelligent. Like this guys, welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. Today, man, we got the hottest dude on YouTube. Dude's got more subs than I do. I'm not jealous, I'm inspired. The dude's sweet. And I was recommended to do an actual collaboration with him. So if I'm ever in South Africa, I will collaborate with your boy Noel Dezel. That's what we're gonna do, guys. Today, we're gonna coach Noel Dezel. We're gonna go through his beginner's guide to leg day with exercise. What I wanna make sure, this is very clear, that this is his opinion and his idea of what he thinks is good for a beginner. So we're gonna see if this is actually good for beginners or it's not. Let's just find out. Let's walk through right now. When you train legs, there are four different muscle groups that you work. The glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, and the calves. When you look at your legs, you have to know that your legs and arms are actually pretty similar. Your quad is like that of the tricep. It's responsible for the straightening of the leg. And the same thing goes for the hamstring, which is responsible for bending your leg. So we can consider in this example that the hamstring is like the bicep of the leg. If you look at the anatomy of the muscle, you can actually see why it's called a hamstring. And now onto the juicy dump. I mean glutes. The glutes are some of the strongest muscles in the body and responsible for a lot of stability in your exercises. And last up, we have those pesky little f***s, the calves. These can be compared to the forearm and are responsible for some of the movement in your foot. So right away, I kind of like how he kind of makes it really simple, just like what I do. I like making things really easy for people to understand because really everybody really doesn't know. If I said, hey man, let's train the bicep femoris. You'd be like, well, the bicep femoris, what the hell is the bicep femoris? Well, the bicep femoris is your hamstring. It's the bicep. On back your femur, bicep femoris. So what I liked about it right away is that he's giving you guys an easy way to understand the anatomy of your legs, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, your calves. Anyway, let's keep going. So let's get into the main idea of the workout. And how do we start most of our workouts? By warming up. As most of us know, warming up can help prevent injury. But what a lot of beginners don't know is that it's a mental and physical preparation for a good workout ahead. Exactly, I wanna stop right there and actually say that again. Warming up isn't just like, just you know, getting warm up, getting blood through the muscle. It's literally to get yourself prepared. I always say that, take some time to get yourself mentally prepared to go through an exercise, to go through your workout, especially legs. For me, when I train legs, I'm thinking about it the day before. I'm already plotting it out. So it's good to prepare your mind, not just your body, prepare your mind to go through the movements, understanding what you're about to do and then doing it. Just like the saying from any given Sunday from Al Pacino, see it before you do it, see it, then do it. So he's gonna give us a breakdown of how he puts his warm up together. I like to split my warm up into three parts cardio, dynamic stretching, and weights. What a lot of guys do is get on a bicycle and cycle for around five to 10 minutes. This doesn't only allow for blood flow, but also preparation of the nervous system. Really hammering your legs can put a lot of strain on your nervous system. And a quick cycle before takes most of that stress away. Start out at a moderate pace for about five to 10 minutes. And if you feel you need to, up the intensity for the last minute. Next up in the warm-up routine, stretching. This can be a bit of a controversial one. Some studies show a decrease in strength due to static stretching before workout. Whilst others argue that the effects are so minor it's not even worth acknowledging. I've done both over the years and personally I find that dynamic stretching works better for my workouts. Dynamic or active stretching is movement based stretching. We often see runners and sportsmen doing this and I know most of us in PE class doing in a circle bringing our legs around. That is dynamic stretching while static stretching is holding a stretch in a fixed position which I'll be doing a full video on in the future. Just after my bicycle I'll do five to ten minutes of dynamic stretching before my workout. So instead of challenging to your mate, rather do some dynamic stretches, whilst you wait for your pre-workout to kick in, and then move on to your workout. Okay, so, yes, I talk about this all the time when it comes to actually warming up. Now, biking is a really good way to warm up. It, you're getting your quads, your hamstrings moving because you're basically doing, you're doing hip circles. You're extending and flexing that knee, and you're warming that muscle up. Now, you can do the same thing when it comes to elliptical. You can do the stepper, stairmaster. You can do the same thing. So you don't just have to do bike to warm up. You can use other types of cardio to warm your body up. As long as you're moving around, you're moving your legs to prepare for your leg workout, that's fine. But when it comes to actually static stretching, yes, I don't recommend doing static stretching. Dynamic stretching is something that I definitely recommend 100%. But again, warming up can also just be you doing the actual movement. If I'm squatting, I'm gonna warm up doing squatting because it prepares your body to do the movement. Then when you're actually in the movement, you're not really wasting time warming warming up, right? So that's good advice there. I like it. Let's move on. Now for the weights. Generally, what I suggest is doing three to four sets of compound movements. In our case, we will use a squat. Use a comfortable weight and aim for around 15 to 20 reps. Throughout your warm-up process, you have to gauge how you feel. Whilst this warm-up routine may seem a little bit extreme, I found that spending those 10 to 15 minutes before training 
really improve my leg days. For beginner leg days, I generally recommend structuring your workout into four parts. First up, intense compound movements such as squat or lunges. And then moving on to less intense compound movements such as the leg press, hack squat or any supported compound movements. And then we move on to isolated movements such as the leg extension, hamstring curl or quad contraction. And lastly, calves. So I'm gonna chime in there. So this is where I kind of disagree. We're talking about beginners, okay? So most beginners don't have a squat right. So for me being a strength conditioning coach, the last thing I'm gonna do is have a beginner start squatting, especially with a bar on the back. So I would have liked if you would have been a little more specific as to what type of squat. So if you're someone who doesn't really know how to squat properly or you're just a legitimate beginner, goblet squats are really good, squatting in a Smith machine, hack squat, something where you're assisted or you're in a position not as intense as having a bar on your back because most people don't have the mobility or the stability to be able to put a bar on their back and start squatting. So I would have changed up and be a little more specific as to what type of squat. I'm nitpicking, but for me, being a coach for over 15 years, I seen it all. And I get consults all the time and, I, and people tell me, hey man, my workout, I uh, really wanna get some coaching because like the training plan I got online, it's not that good anymore. I worked really hard and now I want something different. And I'm like, all right, cool, uh, step back from me. Uh, can you squat for me? And they squat, and I'm like, hmm, you wanna move on to a new training plan and you're not even squatting properly. And that's the issue. Most people don't know how to squat. So I kind of disagree here. I would definitely have something else like goblet squats to start for beginners. Remember, it says beginners. Let's say intermediate or advanced, it says beginners. You're just starting out. Never sacrifice form over weight. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy pair of squat shoes. So I'm gonna disagree. I am a strength conditioning coach. I've coached in the gyms for years. I see this all the time. And I was one of those guys who were like, yeah, man, get some flat shoes. I'm gonna get some chucks. I'm gonna get some right away or atomics. Not bugging on those shoes, but the most of the problem we have when it comes to squatting is ankle mobility. And most people don't have ankle mobility or hip mobility. So when they're squatting, we get the ankles buckling in. We have this bunch of wacky shit that's happening from the ground up. And sometimes it's based on that mobility in the ankle. So someone who is brand new, I would literally suggest getting a squat shoe. Because for most of us strength like conditioning coaches, if someone's squatting and they can't squat properly without their heel coming off, we'll put something underneath their heel. So for you beginners out there, yeah, go buy a pair of squat shoes. It will actually help help you in the long run have a lot more mobility and flexibility in your hips and your ankles over the course of time. Let's keep going. Some guys go for six sets, whilst others aim for four. In my opinion, this really does depend on your goals, but a good starting point is around three to four sets with 10 to 12 reps. Ass to the grass. I'm sure you've heard that term before, but I recommend at the lower point of the movement, try and keep your legs perpendicular to the floor. As a bodybuilder, it's good to keep the tension applied to your muscles for as long as possible. Throughout your sets, going too low can take the tension off of your muscle. As when your ass touches the floor, you might find yourself in a rested position. Now we have lunges. I choose walking lunges because of the concept we just talked about earlier. Now there's certain things that, now I know he's doing this video in like really short period of time because that's his like forte. He does really quick videos, but there's a lot of stuff we're missing here when it comes to actually squatting, why we don't need to go as the grass. As the grass, for most people, you can't keep a straight back. And then their lumbar spine buckles underneath. So the reason why we don't have to go as the grass is because again, most people cannot go as the grass. And again, as the grass is something that's more for powerlifters. But again, when it comes to this, I like a little more explanation as to why not go as the grass because being as the grass, there is zero a zero study shown that going ass to grass will actually help you. It actually says there is no difference going that much lower than going parallel. So I do recommend just going parallel where you can feel your glutes and your hamstrings still engaged. That's how low you need to go. And everybody is gonna be different when it comes to how flexible they are. Hip flexion is a big part of how deep you can go before you lose that tension in your glutes. Static lunges are a good tool in your arsenal. I just find they take a bit long and might be intimidating for beginners. Starting out, I recommend using no weights at first and gradually add weight as you get more stable doing the movement. What I like to do is superset my squat with some walking lunges. However, it can be intense, so gradually work your way up. So I do agree. I would take walking lunges over static lunges, split squats, Bulgarian split squats, hands down. When it comes to beginner, for sure. The reason why walking lunges are really, really good to do is because it keeps you functional. A lunge is just an exaggerated stride. When you're just walking normally, you're walking normally. When you're lunging, you're doing an exaggerated walk, making sure that when you're actually doing the exercise of the movement, when you're hitting the ground, we get nice knee over toe, 
We want good knee flexion so we can keep the tension on the glutes. And then yes, adding weight as we go. But as a beginner, do not superset walking lunges and squats. You're never gonna go back to doing legs again. It's just too intense for most people. If you're a beginner, doing squats in the first place is intimidating enough. Add lunge with it, that's the last time you're doing legs. You're gonna walk around with them chicken legs and bigger upper body, looking like one of them cartoon characters from, I don't know, what's that, Johnny Bravo? Look like, look like Johnny Bravo after a while. I think I'm in love. Guy looks big, but no legs, all right? Anyway, let's keep going. Now that those are out the way, let's move on to less intensive, supported compound movements. There are so many kinds of different leg presses. At the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference. So I'm gonna say this, leg press isn't really to your liking or preference because if you go to a gym that has one type of leg press, that's the only preference you got. Because every gym has everything different. But when it comes to me, I like doing leg press that emulate more of that squat feel. So like a squat press, like a Cybex machine, it's pretty good. Having an assisted movement like leg press isn't less intensive. It might look less intensive, but again, when you're in a machine that aids assistance, that's when you can be the most intense because you don't have to worry about balancing and stabilizing much of anything. You sit down, make sure you're back is nice and flat, strong, nice engaged core, engage those lats, pulling on those handles, and then basically driving your legs and controlling the weight. You can make that workout as intense as possible. That could be the only workout you do and dominate yourself. Now, if I was gonna do this, I would have switched things around. Instead of saying squats or lunges, leg press, and then leg extensions, hamstring curls, and calves, to be honest, for beginners, calves are the really good one to start your actual leg workout. Yes, I know, I don't train calves. I really don't train calves much at all. So yeah, I'm being a hypocrite. But if you start off doing your workout with calves, number one, you get them done. They're out of the way. Number two, you're already warmed everything up. Your posterior chain is literally getting warmed up by doing calf raises. It's an actual gym hack when it comes to doing legs. You wanna work from the ground up when it comes to anything. So if you think about it, calves first, then move your way up. Now again, this is his preference. There is no real right or wrong answer. They're just an optimal one and a less optimal one for that person. So he's not wrong and I'm not right. We're both right, it's just what we prefer. I would recommend doing calf raises, leg extensions, leg curls, then squats, then leg press or calf raises, goblet squats, and then leg press, and then finish with leg extensions and leg curls. We'll keep going, let's keep watching. I like what he's saying so far anyway. Again, there's no right or wrong. They're just an optimal and less optimal for you. I generally like recommending leg press to beginners because it's a very comfortable and supported leg exercise. When doing this exercise and you want to work more hamstring and glute, push with the heel of your foot. And on the contrast, if you want to work more of your quads, push with the ball of your foot. Foot placement on the pad is also very important because the angle of your feet can change to where the tension is applied. At this point of the workout, I generally like to throw in some more high volume. So go for around 15 to 20 reps. All right guys, I gotta I got complete disagree. The problem we have when people give cues to pushing with the heels, especially to beginners, what happens? Toes come off the pad, pushing just with the heels. I always say, Make sure you push with your entire foot. Heel, toes, push with your entire foot. Stop this heel stuff. I see it all the time. Push through your heels, you wanna feel in your glutes. Push through the toes, you wanna feel in your quads. That is true, but your whole foot needs to be on the pad at all times. On the way down, feel the weight at that part of your foot. If I'm doing this, you all right? This is perfect, actually, perfect shoe. If I'm pushing, I wanna feel the weight here. On the way down, I'm gonna feel it here, but I'm still gripping with my toes. On the way up, I'm still feeling it here, but pushing my toes. If you want to have more emphasis on your quads, you lower your feet down on the pad, which causes more knee over toe. If you wanna emphasize more of the hamstring or glute, you push more up to the top to get more of the pressure onto your glute. It's not pressing with your heel or pressing with your toe, it's where your foot is on the pad, so this part is wrong, 100%. Noel Diesel is dope, whatever, cool, he is. His information is phenomenal for everybody out there, but I'm not just gonna agree with somebody because they're cool. Sorry, I'm just tell like it is. I completely disagree with this. It's a bad cue, I see it all the time. I go to the gym, I train somebody, and I see nothing but toes curled back, like this. you push with your whole entire foot. Again, if you wanna emphasize more of the quad, Lower your knee. I'll show you like this, watch, check it out. If I'm doing like high, if I'm high like this and I'm pushing, look at this, 
Guys can't really see much. I'm doing a press, boom. There you go. Now I want a little more quad, do this. Oh look, look, there, look there's, there's my knee, knee over toe. Weird, right? <laughs> Again guys, if you wanna emphasize the quad, push your feet down a little lower. If you wanna emphasize the glute, push your feet a little higher. Now when it comes to what part of your legs you wanna feel, if you go a little more duck foot, you're gonna get a lot more of that quad sweep. You go straight, you get a little bit straight. If you go inside, you don't really wanna push your feet inside. So just keep yourself either here, a little bit outside, I say like one o'clock and 11 o'clock, or two and a 10, right? If you wanna get a little more sweep. But there, gotta disagree. And when it comes to leg press, yeah, it's cool to go 15, 20 reps, but we're beginners. What are we trying to do, guys, as a beginner? The basics. Understanding time and attention, knowing how to keep the load on the muscle for as long as you can with good time and attention, a little more hypertrophy. 15 to 20 reps is gonna have every beginner going <laughs> done. <laughs> no, guys, time and attention. The best rep scheme, 10 to 15 reps, three second negative. There you go. You got 30 to 45 seconds right there. There is your time and attention. Okay? Sorry, Noel, gotta disagree on that. Now, if you want to, maybe throw in a drop set. Now again, drop sets, again. Remember, this is beginner's guide to training. Drop sets, supersets, rest, pause, all those things. Those are things you do after you have nailed down the basics. We crawl before we walk. We walk before we run. Slow it down. Let's keep it for beginners and let beginners understand how to do things basic. Basic. Now. No matter what your sexual preference, you cannot deny the need for a big, juicy dumpy. So we have this really suggestive exercise known as the hip thruster. I'm sure you've seen some girls on Instagram doing this with a barbell. But for a beginner, I generally recommend an easier way, and that is doing it on the hamstring curl. As mentioned before, when you're in the exercise, try a drive with your heel. This will help apply more tension to the glutes. Guys, for you know lovers out there who are gonna go on here and be like, you hating on him because he got so many followers and subscribers, but no, I am saying this to the guys out there, the girls, guys, the circles, everybody who are beginners. I'm not giving any beginner any kind of hip thrust movement whatsoever. They gotta learn how to squat first, at least, and do a proper lunge, and no time or attention before I add in different types of movements that are gonna hit the glutes. That's the problem. Most people out there will see beginners be like, uh, beginner, I'm gonna do a bunch of glute thrusts because that'll help my glutes. You no know one's gonna help your glutes? Squatting, squatting and lunging. That's all you gotta do to help your glutes. If I had to pick two movements to work my entire leg, it will be squats and it'll be l walking lunges. There you go, you get enough hip flexion and knee flexion to bomb out your glutes. Anyway. Another thing you can try is pause and hold on the contraction. And whilst you may feel uncomfortable doing this exercise, I often recommend it because it will benefit your squat. See, I would have taken that one thing he said, nice little pause and slow eccentric or negative. That's all you got to do for the entire workout. That one rep scheme, that type of rep scheme is what you have to do for every single exercise you do as a beginner. Understanding how to move the weight, control the contraction, and then lowering the weight. Understanding the negative and the positive, the eccentric, concentric. That's it, let's keep going. Last and least, calves. I've done a few videos surrounding calves. A lot of people struggle with them. And often, the same people leave calves to the end of the workout. And I say, it doesn't matter when you do them, as long as you do them. I know how it is. You push really hard in your leg session, and now you have to go and do calves. Very easy for you to not give it your all. Now, that is one of the reasons why I recommend doing calves at the beginning of your workout. Now, if you're like me and you're blessed with having genetically blessed calves and been playing sports your entire life and ran track and played basketball and do stepper for hours a day on your toes, then add your calves at the beginning of your leg workout. You will never stop doing your calves if you put them at the beginning. That's what you need to do. I would have changed this whole workout around. Calves at the beginning, I would have done a leg extension to warm my legs up even more. Some kind of a squat, goblet squat, very basic. Then leg press, and at the end, hamstring curls, and call it a day. I'm gonna leave it right here, guys. I think overall, great information, honestly. Good information for beginners, and you can literally copy this workout and get a really good burn, but the, the issue, the only issue I have is we're talking beginners. When we're talking about beginners, we want to master the basics. We don't wanna do a bunch of fancy shit and we can't do the basic shit first. And that's what we wanna do. Other than that, no one gets a pass for me. I would love to collaborate with them. Another pro, love to train with them. 
If I ever end up in South Africa or somewhere where he is, hey, Noel, let's work out together. I know that's not gonna happen anytime soon, but if I ever get the chance, I would love to train with you. I recommend his channels. Channel's got some really good information, short clips for you guys out there who have a really short attention span, don't wanna watch anything that I do that's too long. Go over and watch him, he's got some good information. Again, guys, some things I don't agree with, some things I do agree with. I gotta draw the line in the sand so you guys can trust what I say. I can't just agree with everybody. I think you guys actually got some legit information there, but again, guys, stick with the basics. Anyway, guys, hope you liked the video. You guys if you did make sure you guys like subscribe and share you know i'm gonna come with that telic it is transparent vulnerable truth for coaching johnnystreve.com one more day on my sale 50 percent off my entire site except for phone consults so again sale will be done on the 7th and that is it so make sure you guys sign up if you want to know what my coach is all about book a phone consult and at the end of that phone consult if you want to go with coaching whether it's a one-time plan or a recurring plan, 50% off. Use my code, Johnny15. And again, guys, use another code of mine, Johnny15, for 50% off the Power 13 cookbook. That cookbook is saving my life. Some of those recipes in there, I got I got all the cookbooks, to be honest. That one itself is really good, and I got my own recipe in there. And guess what? I'll make some of my own recipes up anyway, because guess what? The ebook, the training ebook is coming out. The ultimate push, pull, legs training book is coming out for beginners in immediate in advance. It will be out soon. So keep your eye on that, guys. And check it out. I'm doing a collaboration with Fit Army. Use my code for Fit Army. Johnny for 50% off at fitarmy.com. Go, they got some of the dopest gym gear out there, guys. We're doing a collab. We're putting all my characters on some of those shirts and everything, guys. It's coming out finally, finally. Bring out some apparel. But again, guys, go over to fitarmy.com and check it out. Use my code Johnny for 15% off. Anyway, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram at underscore Johnny. Underscore. Send me some pictures, send me some updates, send me some foodie pics, some training clips. Some update picks and progress picks. Whatever it is, guys, send it. I'll repost it for you guys because you know what it is. Iron shall resign. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.